In this five-part video series, Michael Pavlovich, a principal game artist that specializes in concept iteration, showcases his Instalod workflow to create a fully textured, real-time ready asset with Instalod using a 10 million polygon base mesh in less than one hour. In part one, Michael showcases how he prepares the asset for further processing through Instalod. In part two, he demonstrates how to use Instalod's remesher to automate the low poly retopology whilst automatically creating UVs and baking out all textures required for modern texturing workflows. In part three, Michael is going to use the previous asset and textures that were generated by Instalod to quickly texture the asset. In part four of this video series, Michael details the benefits of the Stingray PBR shader and how to set it up in Autodesk Maya using the textured asset as an example. Finally, in part five, he creates a complete LED chain for his asset within just a few seconds to finish off the workflow in making his asset truly real-time ready. This entire workflow typically covers a lifespan of multiple days, if not weeks, when done manually. With Instalod, Michael finishes this in less than an hour while thoroughly explaining every step in the workflow. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel for more amazing videos. You can find a link to his channel in the description below. I hope you enjoy this video series. So if you've watched the live stream videos, you've already seen the making of this weapon using the new ZBrush for R8 features. And at the very end, we went over some manual ways to decimate this down, do some automatic UVs, bake some maps, etc., etc. What we're going to do now is go over an alternative to that, which is using Instalod, a program that has a lot of different functionality that we'll go over in time. But for now, what I'm looking for is just an easy way to get this super high resolution object into a game engine as fast as possible, but also ideally have good topology, have good UVs, have good maps baked from them have good smoothing groups all the stuff that we as production artists have to go you know spend days and days and hours and hours to complete and to be honest that's the most it's not the most fulfilling work it's kind of tedious it's a little bit boring uh, so we're going to use Instalot to kind of speed us through that process so let's talk a little bit about what we have here this is not an optimized weapon in any way if i go through here let's go ahead and turn on polyframe and you can see uh, some of these meshes are dynameshed if i'll tap over here i've got a mix of dynamesh and sub d surfaces and if you got to the making of you'll know that we did a bunch of z modeler for our subdivision surfaces live boolean for some of our more complex shapes and then dynamesh for our detailing phase so it just the point I'm trying to get across here is it's not an optimized weapon at all, but we're going to just throw this through Instalot and let it take care of how to make this a viable asset for production to get this into engine. Now, of course, if you watch the live stream, we did the whole setup and we did the creation of this and we also did uh, vertex color for material IDs here. So we've gone through and we've filled these objects, these different pieces with vert color. Another thing I went ahead and did was organize these pieces based on how they're going to be animated. So for example, I have the trigger here. If I go into solo mode, we've got the trigger. And if I just click this down arrow, you're going to see, um, you know, if the animation needs to pop the cylinder out, they can. Here's a barrel. Here's a button on the side. Here's a little wheel in the back. So basically, here's the little switches on the side. Anything that the animators might need to rotate independently from the base, I've gone ahead and split that off for them. And just keep things organized. I went ahead and named them. So we've got trigger high, cylinder high, barrel high, et cetera, et cetera. The reason I did underscore high is because if we were baking in painter, we'd need the underscore high, underscore low. Uh, but in this instance, in Instalod, that's not in completely necessary. In order to get this out of ZBrush, we're going to have to export it. And we're going to use the FBX exporter for that. Uh, in order to demonstrate that a little better, over here on the side, if you don't have this docking menu open, you can just double click this little divider and that'll open up a docking area for you. I have a brush menu in here. You might have a material menu or something else. Just click that little white circle there to get rid of that menu. Go over here to Z plugin, grab that circle and just drag it over here. You're going to see about halfway down, there's an FBX export import. Go ahead and open that menu up. I'm not sure what the defaults in here are, but what you're going to want to have is visible and smooth normals turned on. Basically what that means is any visible object over here, it's going to go ahead and export for me. You're going to see I have a dummy object up here, just a poly star named Gunbag ZBrush. And ZBrush, if you save a Z tool, it saves your first subtool as the name. I don't want that to affect the names of my actual subtool, so I put a little dummy in here and I go ahead and turn that eyeball off so I don't export. It. And that's really all you need to worry about. And there's some more options in here in the FBX export. You don't need to do any of these. I'm going to keep it simple. We're again, we're just doing visible, smooth normals and going to export here. I'm just going to throw it in an Instalod folder and we'll call this pistol high FBX and just hit export. All right. And once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and head back into Maya and let Instalod take over from here. Okay. 